everyone my name is Jennifer and welcome to my first official journal video um, I had already filmed this before I filmed my floss tube which I released a couple of days ago and I thought to myself you know what I probably should do like an intro before I just jump right into my uh, tutorial I couldn't think of the word anyway so um, what happened was I originally filmed a tutorial on how to make this um, journal out of just basic supplies and I erased it and if you watch my floss tube then you know that so what I ended up doing was I made a little tiny one which is the the same principles except there's just one signature and a signature is just a grouping of pages that have been sewn in together. So this one actually has three signatures and you can't see the stitches because I covered them with fabric and I show you how to do that in the tutorial. But this one, if you look, you can see how it has the three different signatures sewn in. So it's done with the principle is the same. I just did three signatures on this one and the one that actually got film that's going to be uploaded only has one. So, um, because I didn't want to make two exactly like this, I just made a little tiny one just to show you how I did it the original time. So I hope y'all will join in with me on my collaging journey. I've never done collaging really. In my journals, I've done like little tiny things, but um, I'm really excited about this. So, and I will link Margaret Miller's uh, information below as soon as the video uploads I can add it because I do all of my filming and the editing that I do it's which is not much editing but I do it on my phone and so I can't get the links to copy them and get them in there I don't understand how to do that on my phone but I can go back and do it on my computer so um, and Margaret Miller I think I'm saying that correctly, is who I'm going to follow for the prompts. She lists like five things that you include on the paper. So I'm really excited and I hope you join me. And if you don't want to make a journal, you don't have to make a journal. You can buy a pre-made, just little spiral bound one or one that's already bound or however you want to do it. Um, just get some stuff together and, and come and join me. And I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Hi everyone. My name is Jennifer. I am the Calculated Stitcher. Um, I am here. This is going to be my first uh, journal, official journal tutorial. I usually do videos uh, concerning cross stitch and quilting, mainly cross stitch. So I'm going to try this and see how it goes. I already filmed this once, but I erased it, including um, along with my uh, floss tube that I recorded. My phone kept saying it had the internal storage was full so I needed to delete things and I ended up deleting everything off my phone including the two videos that I had filmed. So I have to do that one again and I have to do this one again. So what that means is that you missed me construct the skeleton journal and that's what I'm calling it because it's the um, the base on which I'm going to build. Now what I'm planning to do is Margaret Miller, um, she releases these prompts and you can, it encourages you to collage. And I am a brand new journaler. I've only been doing this for a little while, but I've fallen deeply in love with it. And so I would like to share some of it with y'all. And so she releases um, prompts and I'm going to be doing them, making videos as I do them, and hopefully encourage some other people to come along with me. So, like I said, I created this one and filmed it, and I made it into a journal with three signatures. Now, some of y'all, if you've never made a journal before, a signature is just the grouping of pages that are sewn in together. So for example, this group right here are all stitched in in one spot. So that's one signature. So you can see that this journal has three signatures. 
So this is the journal that I will be using because I like the size of it. It is about a little less than six inches by, how tall are you? A little over nine. So about six by nine-ish. Now how I made the cover was that I used a mailer that I had received. And so this was the back. It's just one of those white um, heavy chipboard mailers and I cut it apart. So you can see that I've used the other side. And then this is the part that I had left when I cut it down to the size that I wanted. And so the size that I actually cut it then was about 12 and a half by nine. And then I just folded it so that it had about a three quarter inch spine right here. Now the one I'm gonna make today is not gonna be the same size because I don't have any more of this paper. So this paper, I was reaching back to get my, what actually came from this pad and I bought this at Target. Um, I'm sure you can order it online if you would like it uh, mailed to you also, but Target is where I purchased it. I also have, because it's a nice weight paper, it's thicker than a copy paper, and I thought that would be great if I'm gonna be doing a lot of gluing and maybe some painting. I haven't decided how I'm gonna do any of this, so I was just trying to construct my journal. Now, I'm pretty sure she started this like back at the beginning of the year, so I'm just gonna start back with her very first one and move my way forward. So I won't be doing them at the same time that they're released, so, but I do have this pad of paper, which is the same paper but I thought that I was going to use this piece that was left over and maybe I could get it and it would fit in here okay and I could make a smaller journal just uh, for an example for you. But so you could still construct one this size with me. You would just use the same premise that I'm using on this one just with different measurements. So like I said, if you wanna make a bigger journal all I did was cut this one 12 and a half long and nine inches wide. And then I cut my paper to be about a half inch narrower than that. So my paper is eight and a half this way. And then this way was 12 inches. I had to think about it. <laughs> so, but let me show you how to do this on a smaller scale then. So what I did, well, I had the papers pulled out. I guess I'll pull some more out. I just uh, pulled out, to, oh, they're already in there. <laughs> I pulled out 10 pages. So I just counted 10 pages and I ripped them out of this pad. And so I'm just gonna make a coordinating smaller journal. So I haven't even thought about the measurements that I wanna use here. And what I think I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over so it's in half. So I'm just doing all 10 pages at one time and that's okay. Now, if you are new to journaling, one of my favorite tools is a bone folder. You don't have to have one. You can always use um, like the handle of your scissors. Works very well also. But it's just easy, it makes it easier to get a nice press on your fold. And so now that I folded it, I'm going to get, when I cut, a lot of um, journalers, when they cut, will use something like a metal ruler like this. And if you're going to use a metal one, I would get one with the cork because it doesn't slide when you move it like this. So I'm just going to, oh, they use this and then they also use a utility knife. Now you can use the ones that are plastic that slide up and that's fine. Um, and they sit there and they do it this way. Okay, I'm very clumsy. So I try to use this as little as possible just for my safety. What I use, I am a quilter 
And this is a self-healing cutting mat, just like I use in quilting. And so then I also use a Creative Grids quilt ruler. Oh, you can kind of see my lamp. Maybe if I move it over, it won't be such a glare on that. Of course, then it's going to glare right here. So let's see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with a vertical line and a horizontal line. So I know it's nice and straight. And then I'm going to sit here and decide, well, now how wide do I want this? Because I need to clean up the edges. Because when you fold the paper, the paper on the inside is going to stick out. Because that's the way it pushes. You can see it better. This is still glued together right here. So you can really see it right here. You see how the middle pages stick out? It's because as you fold right here, it's taking up space. So it naturally shifts the pages in the middle over. So I'm going to line it up and I want to be able to cut all of that off so I probably better do it this way so I'm going to do this and I'm going to then make sure that I'm catching after this so I think I'm going to do this one four and a fourth inches so I'm just making sure it's lined up here and at the bottom and then I'm using a rotary cutter which is what we use in quilting so this one is one that I keep in my paper crafting room. So because paper does dull your rotary cutter just like it dulls your scissors. So I keep uh, separate scissors for my fabric and for my paper crafting. And there we go. Close it up so you don't cut yourself. So throw that in there. And so this is now a nice little booklet signature of papers. Now I'm going to check, I think I'm going to have to cut some off the width of it or the height of it because it is longer than the chipboard that I want to use for the cover. So I'm going to need to, I'm just going to place it on my chipboard like this and I want to leave a little space here. And I want to leave a little space up here too. So I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark that I need to cut it right about there. So I've just made a mark. So then I really need it to be on this side. I'm just going to place it again on a horizontal line. And then I'm going to place my ruler there also. And so now I'm going to cut this part off. Let me put my tools away. I like to pull these back so they're kind of out of the way. And then there we go. Close your rotary cutter back up or your X-Acto knife or whatever you're using. And so now my signature is ready to go. So it is going to fit within my chipboard. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I need to figure out how big I need my chipboard to be. So what I did last time in the video that I erased is I used, in order to make my spine, I used a scoreboard. Now you don't need one of these, a scoring board. I don't know if it's a scoring board or a scoreboard, but it's just nice to have when you have paper that will crack sometimes when you um, try to fold it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on here and then I'm going to say, okay, I want mine to be about a fourth of an inch from the edge. So I want my spine to start right about here. So I'm going to just score and it makes a perfect straight line. It's wonderful. And then I'm only going to put one signature in. I'm just going to make a little baby journal here. But if you're going to do this with me, then you can make three signatures. It's up to you. And so I'm going to give myself, let's say, um, 
let's say half an inch. So I'm just going to move over. Oh, wow. I just got off there. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Hold on. I wasn't pressing hard enough. Okay. A scoreboard, to me, it's difficult because you can poke holes very easily. I learned that the very first time I did it, I did with I did this with just like copy paper. Um, no, it was with cardstock and I just like tore a hole. So there's like a happy medium to not too heavy, not too light. <laughs> All right. So now I just need to cut this edge so it is the same measurement as this edge. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to measure from the first score line to the outside. And it's about four and five eighths. So then I'm going to measure over four and five eighths. So four and five eighths. And I'm going to line it up. Now, I am a math teacher, and so measuring, I, I do like to measure. A lot of ladies who do junk journaling will just eyeball it, and that's great. But I'm not a good eyeballer at all. <laughs> I do not have that skill. So I can use this chipboard for something later. So I'm going to just put it back there so I can save it. There are quite a few um, journalers that I watch. I love Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. She has the most beautiful mixed media projects. Um, hope I hope one day to be even a fraction as good as she is with the mixed media. So she's one that I would recommend you watch. Um, another one would be Pam at the Paper Outpost. She is just very creative and just very free. And like I said, I'm a math teacher and so everything I do seems to be very calculated. That's why I'm the calculated stitcher. Um, also, um, oh, I can't think of her name. Oh, Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. That's a great channel to follow also. I can't, I'm, not, I'm losing my people. Okay, so now we've made our cover. So all I did was fold this where I scored it. And you'll notice I scored it on this side, on the outside and folded it inside. So now I have this little journal cover that I've made. So now I have my signature. Now, like I said, in mine I have three signatures. So I'll show you what I did there. What I did was I had to mark You can see, let me zoom in. You can see where I drew a line across the spine. So from fold to fold, I drew a line and that's where I knew to punch my holes. So I knew that they would have, the holes would be in the same place. Um, but in the one I'm making right now only has one signature which you may wanna just start with one signature in case you don't enjoy it, see how it goes. So that's the only difference between this one and this one. So the next step then is to mark where the holes are gonna go. And you can, some people like to measure it all out and um, they have a formula that they like to follow. And this one, I actually feel okay with just eyeballing it. So I want my holes to be about in the middle and of the two vertical folds right here on my spine. And so I'm gonna say I want there to be one hole here. So I marked it, I'm marking it on the book and I'm marking it on the paper because I want the holes to line up. And so I'm gonna lay it down and then I'm gonna want one about in the middle-ish. And then I'm gonna want one about equidistant from the bottom that this one is from the top. Now I'm gonna to cover my spine with fabric. 
so it doesn't really matter what it looks like on the outside. Sometimes you have an exposed spine and that just means that you'll be able to see the, sti the stitching and some are hidden spines and there's different ways to do that. I'm going to cover mine with fabric in this journal. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to get this tool. It's called a Crocodile 2. You do not have to have this tool. Now I got this at Hobby Lobby back when they still had the 40% discount, the 40% coupon. Um, they don't do that anymore, which I'm very sad, but you can wait for it to go on sale. Now the beauty of this is there is a Crocodile also. Uh, this is a Crocodile 2. It's the big bite and it's because it has this big opening. So you can stick paper all the way in here to punch your holes. Now, it punches two size holes. It punches an eighth inch. And if you'll watch right here, see how it's a smaller punch? And then if I change it to the 3 sixteenths, then if you watch right here, it's a bigger hole that it will punch. Now, the holes are really made to put um, eyelets in. And so if you see, once I click it all the way to the front, then if I had an eyelet here, I can use it to close my eyelet. So, all right. So I want the smaller hole and I'm going to get my clips. Oops, my glue's falling. And so I just have a couple of binder clips. I think that's what these are called. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip I usually use these on larger. You know what, I have some smaller ones. Let's see if they work better because this is just not very much paper. And so I'm clipping here and then I'm gonna clip down here. So I'm just clipping it so my paper doesn't shift everywhere, okay? All right, so I don't need the big ones. So then what I'm gonna do, let me move my journal cover. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just slide this in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch it from the side. So I'm going to be looking at it like this. It's just very difficult for me to do holding it up for the camera. I learned that. So I have, I'm like laying here, I'm not laying, but I'm bent over sideways and you can see right there that I punched a hole. This is hard to show. So see how I have now have a nice hole right there? And this, so I'm trying to hit where I drew these points. So I just slide it in and I lean over. So I'm kind of looking at it with my head tilted sideways till it's hitting that hole. And then I just punch and there's another hole. And so then I'm gonna come over here and do one more. And there we go. So now I have my three holes. So we're all good. So that's my signature. So now I need to do the same thing with my cover. So I'm going to make sure, if you'll notice, do you see how when I marked it, it's really not in the center. So I'm gonna remark it for myself and just scooch it to where I think it's in the center. So about right there. Now, if you wanted to, you could score it right there just very lightly. You could use a ruler and a pencil to draw a line to make sure it's exact. And what I did with my other ones was I took my ruler like this and I drew a line across. Whoops. I'm trying not to get my head in where the camera is. So I drew a line across like this and then I estimated like I'm going to put another signature here and another signature here so that I had three holes. So I punched three holes in each of these places because I had three signatures. This one, I only have one signature. So all I need is just the one hole in the center. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I just did. Let me put my tools away. I have a very small desk, so I have to keep everything neat. <laughs> so I'm going to, using the same size hole, 
I'm going to punch each of the marked spaces like I can't get it quite lined up okay there we go so now see how I have my three holes all right so let me put that over here let me clean up my little punches get them out of the way all right Th these were where stickers were I didn't say that on the mailer and I didn't know if I was going to use them so I did take them off because I wasn't sure what I was going to cover and how big I was going to make it so all right so the next thing I make sure is that they line up sometimes if you have them turned the wrong way if you didn't measure then the holes aren't going to line up so this one everything lines up so it should be like this so then the next thing I need If you don't have um, the crocodile or the crocodile big bite, you can also make your holes with a pokey tool or an um, an awl, I think is what it's called. And so you can use this to poke the holes. Well, I'm very dangerous, so I try not to use that if I don't have to. But I bought a kit and it came with three different colored uh, wax linen threads, all of these large needles with large eyes and this all. Now this I got from Amazon and I think I just typed in book binding kit and until I found one that I liked. So when you are tying your signatures in, the rule of thumb is you want three times the height of your book. So there's one, two, three. So I'm going to cut that. Then I'm going to take one of my needles. And then I'm going to put my linen thread into the eye. And if it makes your, I flatten it with my thumb. I tried to, I don't know if you can see that. And it usually will go in there because they're made for this. But um, there's always bigger eyed ones in the um, little kit that they give you with all of these. So, okay. So what you're going to do is I'm going to use a three hole pamphlet, pamphlet stitch, I think is what it's called. And you can either start on the outside or on the inside. I'm going to start on the inside because I'm going to cover the outside. So I'm going to go through the center hole on the inside of my signature like this. And I'm going to leave a tail about this long. Okay. Doesn't, I mean, there's no specific measurement. If I need more of that length, then I can pull it. Then I'm going to go through the center hole of my cover. So I'm now on the outside. Then I'm gonna go, you can either go to the top or the bottom, it does not matter. As far as I know, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna go through the top hole of my signature. So now it looks like this. So I have the tail and then I have the piece with the needle is in the top. And then if you look at the outside, I have my first stitch. So. You just have to kind of hold onto this one so you don't pull it through. Then I'm going to go through the hole at the bottom. Hold on, my linen thread's coming out. And then I'm going to pull it out this way. Then I'm going to go back through the center. And I can take the needle off then because I'm finished. Okay, I put it right away back into the tube so I don't lose it. Okay, so this is what it should look like. So I have the two tails are here in the center hole. I have one long stitch on the inside, and then I have two long stitches on the outside. Now, when you go to tie this, let me zoom this in just a little bit. When you go to tie this, do you see how these are both on the same side of the long stitch? You don't want that. You want one of them on one side 
and one on the other like this. Now, I want to pull tautly, but I don't want tautly, but I do not want to rip my my paper. So you just, it's like a happy medium there also. And so then I'm going to do, you want to go in both directions. So I'm going to take my left, go over the right and tie it. Then I'm going to take my right and go over the left and tie it because all of the videos that I've watched say that that's how you um, lock in your knot. So I usually take my bone folder and just kind of press it like this because it is waxed and it seems to help it uh, stay in place. I've never had it come out. So, all right, so now I can take my clips off. And we have made our journal. So I usually open it up, press it with my fingers, then I press it again with the bone folder. And then I go back over here, press it. Make sure you just want to train that fold. Oh, I forgot to, I always forget which way to go to zoom out. Okay, so now I've made my journal. And this is what it looks like. So to make the larger journal, you would do the same thing, but you would just do it three times to sew in three of the signatures. So now here you have different options. You can put um, charms dangling from here, beads or whatever, and you can have them hanging out like this. You can just tie a bow, which is what, um, I well, no, that's what I did in my one, other one. I made another one, I forgot which I'll do it on this one. So you can just tie a bow like this and you can make it look like whatever you want. You do whatever you want. It's your journal. Just like in cross stitch, there are no police, cross stitch police, there are no journal police. So, well that I know of, but like I said, I'm new, so who knows? <laughs> so you could either still leave them late like this, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off the big journal that I have, I think I'm going to add some charms to later, but this was just for, um, to show y'all the basic construction. Since my video was deleted, I'm so sad. Okay, so there we go, and that's our little journal. So now I'm going to move over to the big journal, and I'm going to tell you how, I, I'm going to show you how I'm going to uh, decorate the cover. So that's going to be the next part. So give me one second. I'm going to grab all of my um, supplies. Okay, I'm back. Yay! So let me show you what I had originally picked out. So this is some fabric that I have. Um, and it is music paper. And I love to use old music sheets in my journaling. So I thought, oh, that would be beautiful. And I thought this would be great as my spine cover. So I'm going to make it cover my journal like this. I think this is my plan as of right now. Then I went and picked out some paper out of some um, scrapbook paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. They come in like the thick little tabs, tablets of them. And now they are thinner paper, so they're not very thick, and they don't have anything on the back. That's the negative, I think, of these papers. I love the Tim Holtz papers because they are thicker, and they are decorated on both sides. But for what I want to use it for, I think it's going to be great. Now, I don't know which one I want to use. I've been looking at it since Sunday when I actually first filmed this video, and it's now Wednesday. And so this was one of my combinations that I was thinking about having this be the outside and this be the spine. And then I liked this one with the music notes also. And I liked this one with the music notes. And looking at it now, I thought I had made my decision, but I'm kind of torn. Um, I think I'm going to use this one for the outside cover. I think that's what I'm going to do. 
So, now what I was planning on then was um, at our antique store near where I live. Well, it's an hour and a half from where I live, but for me, that's near. Um, they ha were selling like bundles of these. They're just old music sheets that are all torn apart. And so they were just like in bundles. And so I bought a bunch. And so I was thinking that I would use this to cover the inside of the cover, this part right here. But then I started thinking, well, maybe I should use this to cover the inside. But let's make that decision later because <laughs> right now let's just cover the outside. So there are three, if this is your first time to be journaling, I'll just let you know that there are three types of glue that I use. I use the Art Glitter Glue. This I got off of Amazon. It is wonderful. It has a nice, fine tip. So if you're ever wanting to glue something that is um, what a, uh, small that you need, like has fine lacy details, this is great. It is a wet white glue, which means that it will warp your paper sometimes. So you have to be careful. It, when I first heard people talking about art glitter glue, I was wondering why did they want glue that had glitter in it? It doesn't have glitter in it. It's just the name of the company. So this is great. Then the other one that I use is Fabrifix. And this one is great. This one is super, super strong. Won't warp your uh, paper. And so this is the one that I always use when I'm using uh, fabric because Pam at the Paper Ask Post, she's always, she says it really fast. It's paper to paper. It does paper to fabric and fabric to fabric. So it, it'll bond anything. I wouldn't use this one to, on fabric. Now you may, and it may work wonderfully and that's great. But for me, if I ever am putting anything heavy um, or thick, like a button or something or fabric, I'm going to use this one. Then the other one I use is the Scotch Create glue stick and I have just regular like Elmer glue stick and you know school and that kind of thing I haven't had great success with it sticking for long periods of time and I want my stuff to stay put so this one is great and I also got this one on Amazon so I, I live out in the middle of nowhere and like it takes me a good at least an hour to get to a store. So for me, Amazon is the, is the best way to go because then I don't have to travel. Okay, so I'm going to cut out the outside cover. So I want the cover to go all the way to the edges. Well, now I'm wondering if I want it to fold over the edges. I don't think so. I think I just want it to go all the way to the edges. I think I'm gonna ink the edges around. So I just need to measure it and then it doesn't have to come all the way to this edge because my fabric is going to fold over and cover that. So I'm going to decide which way I want this. I think I want it like this. So I'm just going to lay this on top of my journal and I'm going to just mark that I want to cut this about right here. Okay, so I'm going to get my ruler and line it up. And again, you can cut this out. Some people cut with scissors. Um, there's one lady that I watch, a journal journaling lady. Uh, what is her name? And she cuts everything with scissors, and she does such a beautiful job of it. If I try to cut with scissors, my line would look like this, like a fish swimming through the ocean. So I'm going to just cut that out and so this should be then perfect 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 okay so then the next thing I need to do is I need to cut it so that it is the correct width so I'm gonna mark and it looks like I'm gonna need to right about here. I'm just gonna go just to the inside of that fold. I don't want it to go all the way to the fold just because 
as I open and close this journal multiple times, which I will be because I'm going to work through it, work in it throughout the year, then um, it won't bend that paper and make a mess. So then this should now, can't pick it up. <laughs> Let me do it this way. So this one should now, I can't, nothing will pick it up should fit the front of my journal. So I'm gonna measure it right here. And it does, it fits. So now I need to cut the one for the back of my journal. So hopefully it's the same size I'm gonna measure. And it will be perfect. So that was my husband coming in. He didn't know I was filming. He's just getting in from school. We both teach, so he was working on lesson plans. All right, so then I'm just gonna line up this one with the previous one and I'll know where to cut then. I just need to make sure that it's straight. Oh, I'm moving my top one. That may not be a good idea. The Creative Grid rulers are wonderful because they have um, little sticky dots. Not sticky as in like um, a sticker, but sticky as in non-skid and so I can just line it up. And when I do this, it doesn't move. So that's the beautiful thing about it. So I'm gonna cut this off. And now I have the two pieces to cover the outside of my journal. So let's do that. And I'm gonna use my, um, glue stick to do this. So I have books that I use to put this on to glue so it doesn't get all over my mat. And I'm looking and I don't have one next to me. So hold on one second and I'll go get it. Okay, so I'm back. And this is just a, this is a fabric catalog. I just have these catalogs that I keep and I just use them when I want to glue. So then the glue gets on the catalog and I can just tear it off and throw it away. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm going to take my glue stick and get this one glued down. Um, I have five children. For those of you who've watched me on FlossTube, y'all know this, but in case there's anybody new, I have five children and um, I only have one left at the house. He's a senior this year. And we just had our district tennis and he and his partner won first place in doubles. So we are going to be heading to regionals next. So that's very exciting. I have to decide which way I want this to go. I am not the best gluer. Some ladies can just slap it down and it seems to line up magically. I am not one of those people. So I'm gonna put this on here and see I shortchanged this in. That's okay. I'm going to ink it and it's going to be great. <laughs> so I'm going to open it up like this so it's flat on my... Now right here is where I use my bone folder to also spread. I see I have a... Oh no, that's my lid. I thought there was a glare to spread my glue out to make sure that it gets all the way around. So then I'm gonna check the edges to see if any of them are pulling up and they all seem to be great. So then that's going to be the front cover of my journal. So now I wanna do the same thing on the back. So I'm gonna get my catalog again, I'm trying to see where it was stickiest. So I'll put it up here. Anyway, so he has that coming up and we, spring is always so busy at school. We have um, track and tennis and golf and we have the kids in academics. In fact, right now, uh, my husband will be traveling with the academic team, the ones that made it out of district that are going to regional academics they leave tomorrow 
And so he, that's why he was getting his lesson plans together so that his sub would know what to do while he was gone. I'm trying to decide which way is up. I don't know. If you're like me, you're probably watching it going, no, the other way, no, the other way. That's what I always think when the ladies are like choosing, you know, which paper should I use or, you know, which color? And I go, ooh, pick the blue. And then they pick a different color and I'm like, no, no, the blue. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna use my bone folder again to get all the glue distributed around. Now what I really should do is move this one because underneath I have this mat and it's glass. It's a Tim Holtz and it's great because of the glue, you can see some glue right here. All I have to do is take a wet rag and it'll clean it off. But it has that glare from my light, so I have to leave that one there. And um, the glue doesn't like to come off of my self-healing mat as well as it likes to come off my glass mat. So now I have my outside cover and I think it looks great. I really like that color. Okay, so then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fabric... And I'm going to pick out what piece I like the best. So let's see. I don't think it's really going to make that big of a difference. I want one that has a lot of notes. So I think this one. That'll be a good one. So I'm going to take my scissors and just cut it down. And then I'm going to fray the edges because I like when it looks frayed like this. It's nice because in quilting, you don't want that. <laughs> so take a few more out. Then I didn't know if it was going to show like this was showing through. So I'm going to just check it. I may want to use two thicknesses of fabric. And I may just want to use two thicknesses anyway, just because it will give the journal more stability and make my spine just a little more stable. So let's see. I didn't cut it long enough for that though, really. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, let me look. Now that I'm thinking I want to do that, I'm going to have to change what I'm doing because I cut it too short. So I think I'm going to do this one. That'll be fine. All right, so I'm going to recut my fabric so it will then be long enough. And I will fray this end just like I did the last. And I think I'm going to use the double thickness for the stability. I think it'll be nice like that. Now, the only thing is, is if I do that, this end is not frayed. So I may go ahead and cut it apart also. Let me see how much hangover I have. I don't have very much. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to cut it apart like this. And then I'm just going to fray it a little bit on the ends, like that. Now, these are a little uneven right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of straighten up my frays so they're all about the same width, or length. I guess technically is what those are. I don't know how well this will cut fabric since I've been using it on paper, but it did fine. I just want them to be about hanging out the same. I just don't want the one underneath to be longer than the one on top. So, all right. So now I'm going to use my Fabrifix. So I'm going to lay this down. And I'm going to use my Fabrifix glue. So, 
And I just use a um, flower head pin by Clover. And that's what I keep in the hole right here. Now, I do have a Sugar Bell piping bottle that I got from Amazon that everybody talks about how great it is because the tip is super fine. But usually, I want it to come out pretty quickly. So, um, I guess if I ever wanted it to come out in little bits, then I would put it in there. But, like I said, I'm trying to get this out in a big glob, if you will. Not glob, I guess that's not right. I need a large amount of it, I guess. I don't need a thin stream of it. Now, I'm trying not to get it in the holes. Um, I don't want it to go down into my paper into the holes. So I'm just gluing right up to them. And right now I'm just doing the spine and then I'll do the sides in a minute once I get the spine all glued. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my finger, Pam at the Paper Outpost calls it her finger tool, and I'm just gonna smear this glue, trying not to get it in the holes. Um, the only downfall from this glue, I do have acrylic nails and this glue has acetone. So I try not to get it on my nails because it will um, melt them. I mean, that's what they use to take your nails off. So I'm gonna just use this to wipe it. And then I'm gonna lay it down. I think that's the side I want it up, but that's okay. And I'm gonna put it right here and line up right here, and then I can cut it to how I need it. So I'm gonna do this, press it down. Now, she says to smush the glue like that because it keeps it from coming through the fabric and making a stain. So if you have light fabric, you really wanna be careful about that. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna do the same thing now with this one, because I have two thicknesses here. So let me check where it is. And this one, this time, I don't have to worry about the holes because this fabric is super thick. I need to get my needle and, I mean, my pen. And I don't know if I called that a needle a while ago. My mother would get on to me for that. It's not wanting to come out. I think maybe I have a glob or something in the way. I may have to transfer it into that other bottle just because it doesn't want to come out at all here. Okay. Keep trying. So I'm just applying my glue and it's not wanting to come out very well down the sides. So I'm gone down the spine again, and I'm going to use my finger just to smush it around so it doesn't, it's less likely to stain through my fabric. And then I'm just going to lay this one back on top. So now both pieces of my binding fabric are now glued down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this up. I think I'll use my scissors to hold it. like this. And then I'm going to glue. Now I don't want to put the glue where the frayed edges are. I want them to be loose and flowy. But I am going to add glue to the other parts and then I can, oops, ooh, Jennifer, don't get it there. Um, I can glue it down on the sides. I hope this is showing where you can understand what I'm saying. Let me add a little glue where the scissors were. And then I'm gonna glue it down like this. And like before, since I have two layers, I'm gonna have to pull this one back and to pull my sleeves up because I live in Texas and it's been in the 90s all week. Ugh. Like that's not good when you're in the middle of April and 
you're already in the 90s. Not looking good, which is weird because we had that snow storm come through. So un-Texas like. I loved the snow though. It was just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I may have to definitely put this in a different dispenser. Okay, there was a thread there. Okay, so now I should be good there. Get that off my finger. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Get it glue all over. Just don't get it on the frayed edge. So like I was saying, spring's super, super busy here. And um, next week we have, so we have our academic kids traveling tomorrow, coming back Saturday. Uh, today is Wednesday, and then we have our golf kids who advanced are leaving next Tuesday, coming back Thursday. Then our track kids who advanced are leaving next Thursday, coming back Saturday. Then the following Monday, the tennis kids who advanced are leaving Sunday and they're playing Monday and Tuesday. So, and then anybody who advances from regional to state um, will have to travel again and all those things. So it's just spring, it's, a, it's difficult to teach in the spring. I teach at a very small school. We have about um, 60, 65 kids in high school. That's it. So, I'm going to pull, one second, a baby wipe, oops, mm -hmm. my two-sided tape is stuck to it. I just keep these here to uh, quickly wipe up any mess and to get the glue off my fingers. Anyway, um, when you only have 60-something kids in your school, it's usually the same kids that are traveling all the time, so just makes it kind of difficult. Um, to get things taught. I teach high school math and so most of the time um, I can post my lessons online and usually the kids who are your athletes, the ones that are traveling, are usually also usually good students and so um, it's not a problem getting them to turn stuff in. But it's still difficult. I mean, it would be difficult on anybody to miss that much school and then try to keep up. All right. So, put my fabric fix away. I still have some glue, but it's dried, so it's fine. All right. So, there's my journal cover. Now, I may post this. I may not. We'll see how well my first video went. <laughs> um, that is the outside. Now, I'm going to trim up around the edges right here to make it look like I want. I'll probably fray it to there and then trim off any extra because you can see um, it's probably just a little bit too long still, but that's okay. This one looks good. I just need to fray it like this. I'll just pull the, until the glue catches it and then it's not gonna fray anymore. So I really like this a lot. I think it's super, super cute. All right, so then the inside, I forgot I hadn't made my decision. Um, hmm. I really like the music paper because I think it ties into the music fabric. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the paper. So I think what I'm gonna do is then, let me clean up my stuff here. I'm going to use my ruler to tear. I do like the tearing. You can get, I have this ruler, which is an actual tearing ruler. If you look at it, it has the jagged edges 
And um, so it's supposed to create a jagged, like a rough cut or a rough tear. And then you can use the straight edge then to tear a straight one. I like to use the straight one because this one is just a little over exaggerated. You can get the rulers that are clear, which I think is wonderful because you can actually see underneath and where you're tearing. Um, and then some of them have like a, a, like a less obvious tear pattern on this side. So you can do that. But I find that I like the way it looks when you just tear it. Now this is just a metal ruler. It's not actually a tearing ruler, but I usually use this one actually more than the other one because I usually do a straight tear. Now you can still see that it's torn and not cut and I like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tear this page and I'm just gonna tear off the edges and then I'm gonna decide what I'm going to do, uh, where I'm going to cut it for the um, inside. But I know I'm not going to want any of this um, blank part just because there's so much beautiful print on here. So I'm just gonna cut off the edges and then make my decision from there. Now, I'm going to try to make my own homemade paper. I saw Pam at the Paper Outpost. She has a video on making your own homemade paper, and it's so cool. And so you can save all of those torn pieces for that. All right, let me zoom in just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the inside of my cover. And I'm not going to measure it like with a ruler. I'm just going to put the paper down like I did on the outside. And I want it just to come just to the inside of this fold again. Now, if I was had been thinking, I would have painted or covered the inside before I attached my signatures. Because you're going to be able to see that white part. But I'll take care of that later. I'm not too worried about that. Um, so I'm going to line it up. And I want it to come to the outside and the top. And so I'm going to mark. I don't want it to go past the fold because it's going to pull up. So I just need to mark so that it's just a little to the inside of that fold. Right about there. Then I need to know how tall this is going to be. So I'm going to mark it right about there. So I made my marks, so I'm going to tear this one first. And so I just line it up on my mat on one of the horizontal lines. And the mark that I made, I line up on a vertical line. And so I'm just going to line up my ruler down that vertical line. And then I can just tear. like that. Again, now this I'm going to save um, to use when I'm collaging because that's beautiful, beautiful paper. I love the yellow of an old book page. I think it's just absolutely just gorgeous. So again, I'm going to line up the bottom of my paper with the horizontal and then the mark that I made I'm going to line up with a vertical line and then I can take my ruler and then line it up on that same vertical line. Now, some people are not as picky about this as I am and they just put it on there and they just slap it off and that's, I mean, pull the paper and you can do that and that's fine. I just sometimes just am a little more exacting, I guess, so... All right, so then I'm going to glue this paper onto here, and then I'm gonna tear another one, and I'm going to glue it back here, okay? So I'm going to do this, and then I'll come back and show you what I have finished. Okay, so I went ahead and added the other piece, so I glued this piece on the inside cover, 
and then I added the other piece. I tore one and put it right here. And I think it looks wonderful. So what I'm gonna do now, the last thing I'm gonna do for this video is I'm just going to do a little inking. If there is one thing that I would suggest that you buy would be um, just a brown shade of the um, Tim Holtz inks. This is Vintage Photo. It's a lighter brown, and this is just a dauber. You just push it around like this and it picks up the ink. But you can see where you can see the light color of the chipboard in here. And I can just go over this and it just gets rid of that. And I'm not sure if you're seeing that, how well you can see that. But I'm gonna go ahead and ink all around my edges. just to take away that um, stark white color that was coming through. So I'm just going to ink all the way around and see, you can kind of see right here that there's some light. And when I go over it with this ink, it just takes that away. So then I'm gonna come to the inside it kind of gives it a vintage feel, although these are vintage papers. They're from 1927, so um, that's pretty vintage. And so I'm gonna do that. And so I just think it gives it a really pretty look and it gets rid of that white. So I'm gonna do that around all of the sides. I'm gonna play with some different camera angles. I'm not sure how good this one is. Um, I'm used to filming myself straight on. <laughs> so I kind of like it because um, I was cleaning and so I have my old like shirt on that I wear when I'm in the house cleaning. And um, of course, now that I'm thinking about it, you might've been able to see like the holes in the sleeves and stuff. So I don't know how good that's gonna look, but we'll see when I watch it back as long as I don't erase this one like I did the last one. So I'm just going to ink around all of these sides and then I'm gonna call it a day. I have to go make supper now, so. Um, I will eventually, I'll do a video decorating my cover. I think I'm gonna see if I can just kinda ink in here. Maybe I'll put this paper right here here just so I can ink up right here where it's so white just to get rid of that white a little bit but I think I may put some pockets in the covers also I thought that might be nice to be able to put some ephemera that I want to save to use for another project so and there is my journal so this is just going to be the beginning point. Now, if you just have a journal already that you bought at the store, you could always use that also. But in case you wanted to just try your hand at making one, um, I thought I would make a video. And if this one doesn't come out very well, then I'll just make another one and try to make it even better. So I do appreciate anyone who's made it all the way to the end of this. And um, I can't wait to get working on this. So um Hopefully I'll be filming soon on the first prompt and I will try to link her information below so you can go follow her also. Um, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye everyone.